this was Benny the Bum's Diner at one point. Now it's the Royal Thai, which has been here quite a long time. He's just always on the go. He's kind of disheveled sometimes. The old toy store, yes it is. I remember him walking with long strides through town with something on his back. Got some nice surf out here today. I do know that I have seen him with one or two or even three cameras hanging from his body. I've got to take a couple pictures before I uh, go take my roll out into the dark. Uh, just looking at what's here. He looks like a college professor, but he always acts like he knows what's going on. All right. Those guys in their truck know me, I'm my. I just yeah. always thought of him as a voyeur. A creeper? Well, that's your words. But he was always everywhere and he was always taking pictures. I didn't know him all that well before and I don't know him all that well now. His personality was tied in with his camera. This is what a lot of kids don't know anything about today, changing a roll of film. There, even it up. And we're in business. And then I can get you with your camera aiming at me. Boing, okay. We're on our way. I joined the Navy, it was Vietnam wartime, and I was in the Navy for four years. And this uh, interior decorator goes, lady says the Admiral uh, uh, is up in the Admiral's quarters. This uh, would be a great place for a mural, for a painting. I says, I do murals. <laughs> Out of Long Beach City College, I could paint a landscape very well, and uh, that's all it was. And I just kept painting them. They got better at it. They were probably pretty overdone, but they, t they were liked and they just kept me at it. Every day I was doing that. When we were overseas, I took the tour. I went on tour, I was painting on the ship. I got, went over and got a um, an old SRT. We're in Hong Kong and bought an SRT and uh, tried to be a photographer in the Navy too, but I, they didn't put me in there. They put me in radar and not photography. A photographer's mate told me, uh, and I asked him, he says, uh, you want to take pictures? And take pictures every day. Take lots of rolls of film. Take pictures of everything. And uh, he'd recommended that. And I was taking pictures. By the time I got out of the Navy, I was taking slides, taking about 50, around 16,000 pictures by the time I got out of the Navy. See, we're stationed in Long Beach and San Diego, so that was really home. Ticonderoga was 1971, and when I got out, I got here in the Laguna. Got to ride out the canyon. I was, uh, it was a weekend and it was Christmas and it was Liberty and I went out there in my civvies and had a very nice time. And about spent two nights sleeping outside. But I've got all these personal pictures of Laguna. This like, I had to, just had to go photograph it and who's around and what's going on. I took pictures about every day. I was using uh, black and white, Tri-X and Pan film and Ilford, whatever film I could get my hands on, and I'd use it. It was like the water of life. I'd do it. As for other people have vices and spend all their money on stuff, I, I bought film. I don't drink or anything, and I don't smoke anything, and I'm not in any druggy things at all. The people think I am because my hair is long, but I'm not that way at all. I just like my hair this way. I like girls very much. There's a lot of pictures of girls, but I said to myself, don't be prejudiced toward, the, toward one gender. So I get my pictures of the boys too and make sure I'm getting people that really, really are there right at the time. When I first see kids, get a picture of them right away because they're gonna be older someday and their most important picture could be the one you happen to take.
your pictures during the teen years, those are the toughest ones to get because all the teenagers get shy and they, they don't get pictures taken of them. I, I just remember, you know, Doug being around when I was really young, working like at, in the Sawdust Festival or my first jobs, and you kind of were like, what's this guy always taking pictures for, you know? And well, you didn't realize, and you appreciate it now, being an adult, seeing some of the pictures, you just didn't even know they existed. I, I hope that he's digitizing this stuff for uh, people that come along a hundred years from now, because I can't even imagine how big his library is and how many photos he, he has. So about seven rolls of film a week is what I was going through, and I was writing their names down. That was the other big and important part of what I was doing is writing their names in the book as I went around and shot pictures. These are the names of people I took pictures of that day. This is 1993, July 18th. There's the people's names. That's when I changed the roll of film, F344 to roll F345. Every 100 rolls of film, it changed the letter of the alphabet. Yeah, he had a little notebook that he used to carry around. And he was brilliantly intelligent where he cataloged all of his photographs. And I am sure he's got everything and he knows where everything is. Here we are on Coast Highway. Oh yes, it's, what a place, what a place. And here's where I keep my archive of negatives and proof sheets. There's about 50,000 pictures in a bin. There's seven bins of these. I figure multiply seven times 50,000, you got 350,000 pictures. They're all chronologically marked. They all have the names of the people on the back of them. This is from Hospitality Night in Laguna on Forest Avenue when people were going by there. Essence and Scott Schisler, that's her dad. Oh, and this is uh, Abby Ettinger, the raccoon lady on Forest Avenue at the time with her, uh, all her belongings. Abigail Ettinger, she was the, you know, was the raccoon lady, or some people called her the spider woman, but she thought of herself as a fashion model and I'd give her a dollar every time I saw her and take a picture of her. And so I was a client, and she was very happy about that. But she'd put on the makeup and not take any off. So you know, the makeup went on and got darker and darker and darker until she had a total black mask on her face. She was schizophrenic, so uh, her reality, since reality wasn't really there at all. Hi there. Hey, how you doing? Doug Miller. Yeah, I know you, Doug. Paul. Paul, what's your last name? Wook. Paul Wolf. Wook. Wook. Oh, and the Wook. my daughter, Sydney. Hello, Sydney. <laughs> they named you after an opera house? Yeah. Oh, David Levy. David Levy. Yeah, I always see you. Let's get a picture of you guys. Oh, there we go. Oh, she, yeah, oh, I like that. She holds her wrist in that way. Okay, great. Oh, yeah, I better get a portrait. She's just oh, nice. cute. She just, oh, yes. Oh, that was it. <laughs> I learned way back, take them fast before, they, before they're aware of it. And you end up with the best shots in the world that way. The way to get a best expression of somebody is just watch them, look at them closely when you see the person and see them at their very best. Everybody's a portrait. Anytime they're around, there, there is a portrait of them. You just have to look for it. Get your camera on them and wait till you see them looking like they really are. Then they'll come back all of a sudden. They'll put on their mask for a while, the cosmeticized face, uh, to look nice. And then when it disappears for a moment, you get it. And it's beautiful. You get their inside. You get them laughing at you. you act like an idiot and they'll laugh. And you get them laughing and being themselves. And then you've got the epitome shot. It's always trying to get the epitome of a person, the, what they really are about.
Elizabeth. Yeah, the sawdust starts uh, 27. Friday, Friday the 27th is when it opens. Do you, have, was, do you have any extra guest passes left? Not for the uh, opening at party. They're just. So I go to the clients. So I, yeah. I hope people buy paintings and buy. That's what I got to do. Later, okay, Elizabeth. Say hi to Becky for I will. Just want a picture of that. There we go. Let's go. I've been in Sawdust, this will be my 44th summer. I came here in 71, I got out of the Navy, got a booth at Sawdust, and uh, I saw my miniature paintings. And I've painted 15,000 of them. And probably sell 400 and 500 each year. Got my crowbar. That's for when you make mistakes. I go to the dumpster to get scrap to use for uh, extra wood. I find two by fours and planks and a lot of plywood in there. And the plywood pieces on top are stuff from the, from the dumpster. That's what I use. I build fairly the funky way it used to be done during the 70s. There's a few of us that are uh, like from the beginnings, the earliest days. It's had an emotion to it. You came in here and felled it, and people came in here and dug it, and you couldn't get that people out of here. There had to been almost a million people come through here. Everybody wanted to see this wild place with ponds of light at night. It had a gorgeous feel in here. For two years, I did Sawdust Festival. I did black and white photography and had them on the wall and only sold one. <laughs> and really, it's really kind of pathetic, really. But I took mostly people that I knew, so nobody was buying my stuff. But anyway, so I went and did the paintings. I tried, did the paintings and more successful. For a painting, you can sell a painting for $75 or $150 or $200. Well, a photograph's gonna sell for 35, so it made more sense for me to paint. And then uh, as it went, as the rules came, there went the block when somebody brought in a logo and then somebody brought in plywood, let alone drywall came later. It's still pretty, but it's not like it was. Do you think uh, Lagoon has changed a lot? I think it's lost some of its charm and I think that a lot of new money's come in. So I think it's a little bit more superficial than it was back then. What do you think? Nouveau riche, isn't that the <laughs> yeah, term? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, totally. It's gotten uh, a lot more affluent, and it's lost its artistic kind of, yeah. you know, like beachside town feel. And... Laguna was, um, it was more artistic than it is now. There were definitely artists and hippies, and in retrospect, it was a little more rough and rugged, you know? Um, it wasn't quite as polished. It was more that art colony and it was really chill. I remember having to tell people when, when they asked where, where I lived, I would say, well, do you know where Newport Beach is? And they would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, just a little bit south of there. But because no one knew anything about Laguna. Then the whole internet uh, bubble in the late 90s and having the television show. Wherever Kristen went, drama followed. She thinks she's hot. And I think it's starting to get a lot of notoriety and then seemed like that was the destination. This used to be Mariner Stationery. Now it's contemporary art. It was sad when it go, everybody was sad when Mariners left. This was Class Electric, this one, and electric shop in here and light bulbs. The wine gallery's brand new, they just put that in here. This is where the Texaco station used to be on this corner. 
Electro Slim. You like the Electro Slim? Nothing like Electro Slim. My name was Electro Slim. This is the new store. They're trying to make it all hip in there, you know. But who knows what's going to happen there? Jerry, the LMP, passed away, so it went its way. Everything changes. start to get the idea that things are going to be torn down and missing and you're not it won't you won't be able to go back in time and get it again so I kept taking pictures of things that wouldn't be there anymore and that's what I stuck to for 30 40 years they have got a lot of buildings downtown and things and odd spots in the lagoon to the alleys behind the buildings the fronts of buildings I got those two but I've got all these places that are now they're they're gone This is from 1979. Yudi's uh, Vinograd's Bar Mitzvah. Now I get in a safety pin and take the tip of the safety pin and knock off the little, some of the hairs and junk that are sitting there in front of my nose. This is Acord's Market in 1979, May 4th. Kevin Murphy, Ann Bulware, Ann Bulware, Eureka Lacey, Barbara Amundsen. Put the. Uh, at two rolls a day, and there's 8,000 something rolls. Ah, it takes a long time. <laughs> Who knows? There's my wife, Becky, and my sons, Josiah and Jesse, back in 1990. I thought everything was going to just sit in a box, and I'd pass away someday, and maybe my kids might care about it, but maybe nobody would care about it. But uh, Facebook has been the great saver. So I've posted so far about 10,000 pictures and albums on Facebook. And uh, 10,000 pictures may sound like a lot, but there's 350,000. It'd take me 10 years, 20 years could go by and I wouldn't run out of pictures. And all these people are finding pictures of their family and their kids and their relatives. Don't have everything. But I gave some people back something they didn't have at all, the childhood pictures. All right. Have you seen that picture before? Interesting. I have. I saw it on Facebook recently. I got like a message that said someone tagged you. There was a Battle of the Bands. I think this was Battle of the Bands. I don't want to like drop your <laughs> Oh my God, I was thinking about that picture the other days because I saw some of this guy's work. I definitely knew him for the pictures he took in the surf scene, you know? I mean, I definitely remember his personality. I don't remember his name. Isn't that Mike Nahr, dude, or is that Glenn Cecil? <laughs> that's Glenn Cecil. Who's that's that? Glenn, that's that? Jake. What's her name again? Liz. Oh what yeah, Liz, Liz Galing. Hey mom, mom, mom. Yeah, that's yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was Doughboy over in the far right, and Cam. He married one of the Garcia girls. He looks so young. Who's that? Wyatt Peabody. Oh, that's Wyatt, yeah. Wait. Jamie Forenza? Jamie Forenza, yeah. Jake Reich. There's Mike Noy. Walter. No, Mike Noy. So do you know who took that picture? He's, um, he was a, an old guy that used to walk around and take photographs in Laguna and, and I saw one of them on somebody's page the other day and I'm sorry I can't remember his name, you know? Isn't that funny to see the pictures of him? <laughs> I have no pictures of that time in my life. I think we might appreciate him now because some of the pictures, you know, that we didn't take, he took. 
So, yeah, that's badass point. that that photo is there, you know. So that's cool. I kind of want to meet Doug because I've seen him around forever and I've never, yeah. you know, never. And how come you've never talked to him? I, have, I think I've said hi, but I've never actually engaged in conversation with him because, you know, when I was young, I was uh, judgmental and I thought he was um, a little odd. To it's be shocking here. to hear that you're judgmental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it should be. <laughs> He is kind of an iconic character in this town. When someone is different, and I don't mean different in a bad way, I just mean different in a conforming way. Yeah, you might be a little bit afraid of that. Should they be afraid? Absolutely not. That's one of the things I like about Laguna Beach, is that there are a lot of people who have different habits different hobbies, different mannerisms, and they all come together in this town. And it's it's very interesting to see that. You can enjoy seeing different different people doing different things. Here you go. Bless you, sir. I hate cigarette butts, gotta get rid of them. Hello, and you're Hi. good looking. Hello. Isn't she pretty? My goodness. It's recently come to my attention that some people are actually have been upset about Douglas Miller and his uh, fancy free photography taken around Laguna Beach. But in reality, he's made so many people happy with all his postings. I mean, I'm 65 right now. He's taken pictures of me and my brothers and sisters when we were all, you know, five of us. He, he was right there. He's been there for all of it. You know what, Doug is just is the holder of all these memories and feelings. He doesn't realize, he does not know how important he is to all of us and to all of our lives. I mean, and for all these people enamored with Laguna Beach because they love the arts, but I noticed they don't particularly like the artists. Well, what they've done is they moved in and tried to make Laguna Beach in their own sorry, boring image of where they came from. Recent vintage people, you have come here and tried to change Laguna Beach, which is a historical artist community, and Douglas Miller is the Renaissance man on Laguna Beach. Artist, musician, photographer, human being. <laughs> Season's going pretty well. Actually, it's okay. Uh, there's um, less people coming in the gate, especially during the weekends, you can feel it. But people love the sawdust. They're here, and it's a really great day, and we really got this great band. It's really cheerful. People feel like doing stuff. see it. This is birthday painting number 12. This has about 3,000 people's names and birthdays, I figure, on it. Went in Sodus in 83, did a, an old landscape that wasn't going anywhere and just started peop putting people as they came by their names on the painting and they said, what's your birthday? And I wrote their name on the painting with their birthday. Ended up doing that for uh, the whole season, filled it in. Then I went to uh, do a no new one the next year. This birthday painting probably has eight to 10,000 people and birth stories. Ask people stupid things that happened in their birth, so there's comedy on it at the same time. 
What they represent is this galaxy of people that you can meet in your life. People come by, everybody has a little story, and there they are. The star, everybody's a star as I see it. Everybody's just as important. It's a remarkable thing to feel that. It's, it's nice to do a painting that feels bigger than me. Oh, there, we finally got something decent. Yeah, I don't like the way digital does, sunset doesn't do it as well, but what I've got is this agave plants growing in front of it, which really makes a picture. That's the right exposure. Then a horizontal and a vertical. Okay.